Shao, the conqueror of demons, is having his rerun again, along with Yae Miko. Hi, this is Elbedo. In this video, I will help you decide whether pulling Shao is worth it by comparing him to another well-loved and also hated animal DPS, also the same height as him, the Wanderer, the former Harbinger. We will put them against each other by comparing how they utilize their element, their playstyle and combat capabilities, how easily we can build them, and how flexible they are as a main DPS. And I will be giving points to whoever wins in every category, so make sure to stick around to see who wins. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you'll get notified when I release a new video almost every week. We will be comparing the two animal boys because aside from the fact that they are both very cute, small, and a little rude, they both wield the element animal. They don't only use the same element, but they are also both main DPSs. By that, I mean that their kits and playstyles are mostly revolving around dealing damage while being on field rather than supporting the team. With that, let's get started. The first category in the list is how well they utilize their elements. This is very important to discuss because Animo is one of the strongest elements in the game. For two reasons. First is because Animo characters can swirl almost all elements. Not only dealing damage, but also supporting the team by giving extension of the element they swirl. Just like how Kazuha can swirl Pyro to make Ganyu an effective melt DPS. Second, Animal Wilders can wear the Viridescent Venera set, which for me is one of the top 3 artifact sets in Genshin Impact. This allows the wearer to shred the resistance of enemy to whichever element the swirl was infused with by 40%, not to mention it also increases swirl damage. Now, the question is, can Shao utilize these amazing mechanics? The straight answer is, sadly, no. While he can technically swirl while his burst is active, it just doesn't really make sense to do this since his role is a plunge attack selfish main DPS. This means that most of the time, Shao will require you to pair him with support teammates that can boost his damage and batter him rather than having off-field DPSs like Seng Shou where he can swirl elements. Another bad news, this also means that he cannot really utilize the 4-piece Viridescent Venera set since this will not really benefit him and his team. On the other hand, the Wanderer can effectively utilize the advantages of being an animal. Unlike Xiao, who's damaged mainly from his plunge attacks, Wanderer deals damage with his normal and charge attack, which means he is a more effective swirler, which also means he can have teammates like Sing Shou, Pedo, or Yelan, whose off-field damage can be triggered by normal attacks. Because of this, Wanderer can also wear the 4-piece Weird Descent Venera set. He can benefit not only from the 2-piece set effect, which is the animal damage bonus, but also the 4-piece set effect since he can consistently swirl the elements of his teammates. He also benefits from having different elements on the team, unlike Xiao. With Hydro, his skill duration increases. With Pyro, his attack increases. While with Cryo, his crit rate increases. And lastly, Electro provides him energy. This encourages us to actually use off-field sub-DPSs and not only use his normal and charge attacks as the sole damage dealer of his team. With all that, I can say that in this category, the Wanderer takes the point. Now let's talk about their playstyle. This category can be a little subjective because one player might like Shao Plunge attack gameplay more than Wonder's normal and charge attack gameplay, or vice versa. So to make it objective, I will not talk about how I feel using them, but the benefits of playing them instead. I will also provide multiple points in this category since there are a lot of things to discuss here. Let's compare their main damage source. For Shao, it is his Plunge attacks. This can be harder to pull off than just doing normal or charge attacks especially in mobile. You might get a little dizzy when using it at first. It will take practice but I'll say it's worth it since his plunge attack actually has a decent AoE. So it's very good to be used against multiple heavy enemies. I say heavy enemies because Xiao's plunge attack can knock back small enemies. So make sure to take that in consideration when using him. Another advantage since plunge attacks are considered heavy attacks like Claymore does, he can actually break shields faster than Wanderer's normal attack. A very important thing to consider with Xiao though is his burst. To utilize him fully, you will have to always burst on cooldown so you should partner him with a battery and make sure he has adequate ER, otherwise you will have a huge DPS loss. Wanderer's main source of damage is his normal and charge attack. 
this is obviously easier to do than doing a plunge attack. You just have to click or long press and you're good to go. Another advantage of Wonder is he uses a catalyst. That means he is long range, so you will be more comfortable fighting enemies from afar. However, he is a small AoE compared to Xiao, so you might want to make sure that the enemies are beside or close to each other. And unlike Xiao, his raw animal normal attack and charge attack will be slower in breaking shields of the enemies. I can say that both Xiao and Wonder do good on what they're supposed to do. Their advantages in this category outweighs their cons, so I will give points to both of them. Let's quickly talk about their ascension stats. They both increase their crit rate when you ascend them. This proves that they are indeed and should be the main DPS of your team. This also means that it will be easier to focus on other stats like crit damage or attack or even ER. Because of that, I'll give them 1.8 each. How about your survivability in combat, especially in the Spiral Abyss? Xiao has an HP draining mechanic in his burst, where he will deplete a certain portion of his HP while his burst is active. This means having a healer or at least a shielder is almost necessary for Xiao. However, this opens new possibilities for his artifact sets and teammates. Because of this, Xiao can effectively use his signature artifact, Vermilion Hereafter. Since it gives him attack as his HP decreases. Another great thing is you can effectively pair him with one of the strongest support in the game, which is Farina. With Xiao's HP draining, you can easily stack fanfare points which is the basis of Farina's buff. Having this burst effect is actually not that bad since he can utilize other mechanics in the game which will favor him more. Wanderer, although he does not have an HP training mechanic, can be quite annoying to play with. That is because he can be very easily knocked back by enemies. I say very because even Hilichurls can disrupt his normal attacks which for me is very annoying. Of course you can always practice dodging by using the dash button. And I think this is the reason why Wanderer has a passive where he can fire 4 wind arrows by chance when he dashes while flying. Another remedy to do this is to pair him with the shielder or characters like Sheng Shou where he can provide resistance to interruption. For some players, this might be a deal breaker even for me since not everyone is good at dodging and this happens quite a lot even if you try to dodge. This time, I'll give the point to Xiao. Exploration with animal characters is almost always very pleasing due to their skills. With Xiao, he has two charges of quick dash attacks that you can use mid-air, so it's very useful in areas where you need to jump from one mountain to another. However, exploration with Wonder is top tier. You can literally fly from a considerable amount of time without consuming stamina. So you may run after, then fly again once the cooldown resets. This is useful in almost every exploration condition. So having Wonder in early AR is very efficient. So that means Wonder gets the point. So far, Wonder has the lead. Let's see if Xiao can keep up. Let's talk about how easy it is to build them. First, with the weapon choices. A big part of this category is how FTP friendly they are. Starting with Xiao. To be honest, Xiao doesn't really have many weapon choices in general. His FTP weapon would be the Blackleaf Bolt. This is an okay weapon, but I think of it as more of a stat stick rather than an actual good weapon since the passive is very conditional. Another FTP weapon is the White Tassel. But this is only good for early ARs. You might want to use another pole arm, especially if you are in higher AR. The event weapon missive wind spear is also an okay choice. You will be able to partially use the passive since you mostly pair Xiao with Bennett, meaning you can trigger a swirl reaction increasing his attack. However, the EM buff will not be useful. For non-F2B weapons, I think your safest and best choice for 4 star pole arm is the deathmatch. I'd say if you do not have his signature weapon or staff of Homa, which is obviously the top two choices, you may opt for this. Otherwise, any attack main stat weapon will do. In conclusion, Xiao doesn't really have the best weapon choices among the two. But you will be delighted with Wonder's weapon choices. Since he is a Catalyst user, there are tons of options compared to Xiao. For example, the Dodoka Tales, a free event weapon from the 1900s, aka version 1, is very great for him since it buffs his charge attack and increases his attack. He also has more crit weapon choices than Xiao. He can also wear the Widsit, which is just broken, especially at R5. There are many more choices, so I won't be able to discuss all of them for now. Since Wonder has a wider weapon choice, he takes the point for this round. How about their artifact sets? 
As mentioned earlier, Shao's HP draining mechanics makes him able to wear his signature artifact set, Vermilion Hereafter. But what's great with Shao is making him wear 2-piece attack and 2-piece animal damage bonus set or 2-piece attack and another 2-piece attack set is not really far from wearing a 4-piece set. This makes building Shao easier since you can just throw in some 2-piece sets and he'll be good to go. Wondrous Artifact Sets, however, has a considerable gap in terms of wearing a 4P set versus just two 2P sets, particularly his best slot, Desert Pavilion. With Shao, you can just settle in using 2P attack and 2P animal damage bonus, saving you precious time and resins. So, Shao has the point this time. We are in the last category Team Comps. Shao, as mentioned earlier, is a selfish main DPS which means he prefers his teammates to be supporting him rather than still in his spotlight. Yes, we can actually pair him with off-field DPS like Shangling or Xingxiu, but I think adjustments to these teams are not worth it compared to just giving the three other slots for support characters. Pairing Xiao with Shangling will be very hard since you need a battery for both of them, and they have different elements so they won't really battery each other. Having Shangling wear Favonius Lance might help, but I don't think this will be enough because even with Raiden, she struggles sometimes. But Xingxiu, you have to perform a normal attack before you jump, so it might take away some of the time Xiao could just use to jump. But with Furina's entrance in version 4.2, we can finally have both a great buffer and a sub DPS for Xiao. There are many other unconventional Xiao teams, but generally Xiao has a more limited team choices among the two. Wonder is more flexible than Xiao in terms of team comps. I already mentioned this, but Wonder can wear the weird Descent Banner set and also has a passive where other elements can buff him. This makes him very welcoming of other off-fields of DPSs with different elements to his teams. You can do a Wonder National Team which will surely obliterate the enemies. You can do Taser Teams. You can also do Melt or Vape Teams. You can also do a Hyper Carry Wonder. The possibilities are endless, so obviously, I'll be giving the point to Wonder this time. Let's now tally the results. Wonder has a 2 point lead with 6 points, with Xiao only having 4. 2 points lead of Wonder mainly revolves around the fact that he is a more flexible animal character in terms of his team comms, his weapon choices, and even the utilization of his element. That doesn't mean though that Xiao is not a strong character. I think a big part of it though is because Xiao was released two versions earlier than Wonder. That means there are a lot of changes in added mechanics to the game before Wonder was released. So it's basically expected for the developers to release a more refined character, right? However, personally, I think Xiao is very worth my primogens. To be honest, I use him more than Wonder, especially in the Spiral Abyss. Also because Shan Yun was just released. Both of them have their pros and cons, but both these small animal DPSs are very worth your pulls. It's just a matter of your priority and your gameplay preference. How about you? Who do you think is better? Comment below. We reached the end of the video. Again, this is Elbedo. See you next time.